So welcome back to another episode, and the old police is here to make you feel old. 25 years ago, the Super Nintendo was released. Unbelievable. I cannot wait to talk about this. I want to talk about the launch of the Super Nintendo, something I've never really done on the show in, in eight years of doing the show, which is unusual. And I can't wait to talk about the launch, picking it up, the launch games, what was going on at the time, what we all thought about the Super Nintendo, so it's gonna be a nostalgic one today. So everybody was enjoying the Genesis, the Sega Genesis at the time, but it was now time for Nintendo to make a next generation machine. We were hyped for it, we were reading about it in video game magazines. It was coming out, finally. And we couldn't wait for it. It was so exciting, I'd been looking at it for, for months, talking to all my friends about it. The anticipation was really, really great for it. On all, on all the launch games, and all the games to come after the launch. So, very hyped machine. As I say, I loved Sega. Uh, but they were very, they were still trying to find their footing a little bit. But Nintendo had cemented a great relationship with fans back then. Double Dragon, The Legend of Zelda, the list goes on and on, Metroid. We loved games on the Nintendo. Nintendo was king back in those days. They really were the king. So, I was looking forward to whenever this machine was coming out, and it's very different than now. Now, we know a release date, we pre-ordered it online, it'd be delivered to our houses that day. It wasn't like that back, you know, in the 90s at all. Even actually, when you think about it, up to about 10 years ago, it wasn't like that either. So, how I found out that the Super Nintendo had been released, a friend of mine, Trevor Homeless, that's that's the name that we gave him. Uh, his name was Trevor Homeless, but we called him Trevor Homeless. That's because he ended up moving around a lot later on in his life. But he had called me up and he's like, John, oh my god, oh my god. And I'm like, what? He goes, I got the Super Nintendo. And I'm like, and I was like, what the fuck? What is with Andrew? What is with this guy Mike down my road at Zelda? Everybody always seems to find out about this stuff. I'm the last person to ever find this shit out in my neighborhood. It, it became really... F I remember getting the call and I was just like... Just got the grimacing face like... Oh, you got the Super Nintendo? Well, that's awesome, but... What the fuck? He's out? I was so jealous. I'm like... And he's like, yeah. He goes, do you want to come over? I'm like... Um, no. And I didn't... I didn't want to ruin that, um, you know, that, that experience of experiencing it for the first time by myself. So, this is the strangest thing that ever happened to me back then. My parents were notorious for saying, you know, if I go up and ask for anything because I was a kid, I was like, Hey, Bubba, this came out, this game's out, can I get it? They're like, no, no, you'll get it at Christmas time or something like that. And, and remember, it, right now, it's a beautiful sunny day outside, and that's exactly what it was like 25 years ago. And my parents would never do anything like that for me. Like, they just... Not out of the blue. And I went up to my parents and I said, Listen, my friend Trevor has the Super Nintendo. It's the next biggest gaming machine ever. I'm so excited about it. I would love to get it. It's just released. And my parents did something that shocked me that day. They really did. What amazing people. They turned to me and said, Okay, let's go and get it. And it's like, really? And they're like, yeah, well, where do we have to go? And I'm like, well, it's released in the States. Now, Canada and the States, uh, you probably heard us talk about this a lot on the show. Back in the 90s, most games and machines would always release in America first. And then Canada would get them weeks later. It was just the way things worked, game-wise, console-wise. That's just the way it happened. So I said, well, we got to go down to the States. we got to go down to Bellis Fair, and it's just past the border. The border's probably about half an hour away from us, but it's still, I mean, it was a big deal to go across the border, go into the States, and uh, pick this machine up. And they're like, yeah, okay, let's go and do it. I, I still, to this day, it's 25 years later, I'm still in awe and shock that they were so ready to say yes. And they're like, let's go and do it now. I'm like, who, who are these people? Have you replaced them with somebody else? But... That's the first thing I want to say about this launch is that 25 years later, I I so appreciate that my parents did that for me. 25 years later, I still appreciate it so much that they did. And so that was such a a wonderful memory for me of when my parents were still, you know, uh, my dad was still alive and we had a kind of a moment like that and that they were so nice to me. It's something you never forget. So we went down, we went down to Bellis Fair, we drove down there, and I remember walking into this, it was like a toy store. It wasn't Toys R Us, it was a toy store. And they had a big display up front for the Super Nintendo. 
and I walked in and I was like, yeah, this is the machine. I was so excited. It was like, it's so, it's, I remember that so well. And uh, my parents picked it up and it came, came with Super Mario World packed in as the game. They don't do packing games like that anymore for launch systems, do they? They really don't. I got home, I unboxed it all, and you know, my parents just went off to do whatever they do, you know, we're doing with their day. Beautiful sunny day outside, I'll never forget it. And I hook up the Super Nintendo, and I put in Super Mario World. And what unbelievable memories I have playing such a magical game. I was a huge Mario fan. Playing Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3, I'd finished them all. I, I finished them multiple, multiple times. To see a Mario game in 16-bit, now that was the thing, we were going from 8-bit to 16-bit graphics. And it felt like a huge jump. It was like, I just remember just thinking they were so beautiful. Just the, the past, you know, the colors were so vibrant and there were so many different colors. And the animation, the amount of enemies on the screen. And I remember playing Super Mario World and that was my summer game. I, you know, drawing the blinds, closing all the blinds, making it really nice and dark and cool in the basement and beautiful memories playing Super Mario World. I loved it. But there was a lot of other launch games, but I I didn't get a chance to play them all immediately. I just played Super Mario World, finished that, got everything I could about that. Kids from the neighborhood came over. We were playing the hell out of the Super Nintendo. We were loving it. But there was other launch games. There was Pilot Wings. And I'm not, I've never been a huge Pilot Wings fan, but nobody can deny that Pilot Wings was showing, you know, it was a flight simulator t uh, type of game, showing what the Super Nintendo could do with, uh, you know, with Mode 7, its scaling system. When you'd be sk you know, skydiving out, and you'd be going towards the ground and how the ground scaled towards you. That's Mode 7. And Pilot Wings was a real showcase for that, uh, which was wonderful. The other game was like SimCity. Uh, I wasn't ever a big SimCity fan. I never really played much of that. Uh, Gradius, or Gradius if you want to call it, 3 was out. A great shooter uh, with 16-bit graphics. Looked awesome. Uh, was loving playing that game. And then the other game that was like a big, big game was F-Zero. Now my friend Trevor got F-Zero. So I was playing Super Mario World and I eventually School started again. We have uh, a high school and we would skip school even in the first couple of weeks and go to his place for lunch. I've talked about it before. And all we'd do, all the kids in the, you know, in school would skip school. We'd all go over to his place and have a very extended lunch and play F-Zero. And that game was using Mode 7 in an incredible way. Just We were just so in awe of this racing game and how it scaled around as you're racing like super fast and boosting and just looked beautiful and can't say enough about the launch with F-Zero. It was a great launch, it really was. It was a lot of fun. We launched with a Mario game and a really excellent Mario game. And the initial games were great. Playing F-Zero, as I say, was mind boggling. But there was a lot of other games to come as well. You know, Actraiser was coming. Final Fight was coming. You know, in the far future, Super Metroid was coming. The Super Nintendo had started and it had proven itself completely worthy. And it had changed, the, the, the look of the system had changed from the Super Famicom, but we didn't care. This was our system. And as, you know, a non-comparison to the Super Famicom as its own thing, at the time, the design aesthetically was cool. I did like the purple and gray. And I like the controller. Have, and this is, this is my original controller. Here, look at this. The shoulder button there, look at that. It's at, it's pushed in, uh, it's concaved in from so many years of, I blame Street Fighter. I blame Street Fighter for this. My hard kick was always on here and I'd always extra do it so it's, it's broken and I'll never get rid of this controller. It's uh, a part of history, but the Super Nintendo had begun back 25 years ago and there were so many great games to come, so many RPGs, and around the corner was Final Fantasy II. I mean, there was so much coming down the pipeline. 
like, I just look behind me and see all the great games. Mystic Quest, Lufia, Illusion of Gaia, Brain Lord, uh, Paladin's Quest, The Ninja Warriors, Mystic, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll do Mystic Quest again because it's so good. Super Mario RPG, Super Metroid, uh, you know, Link to the Past, Seven Saga, Arcana, Soul Blazer. I, I, I mean, the list goes on and on. We were all, we all of my friends had a Super Nintendo and we all loved it and we all traded games, that's how it all worked. I, I, got, I got to play some really unique titles on the Super Nintendo and it looks so beautiful. And what did you guys think? Were some of you around for the launch of the Super Nintendo? It did not disappoint at all. And 25 years later, these games are still excellent. I was playing F-Zero to capture footage last night and I was like, this still controls really well and it's still a lot of fun. And Super Mario World, 25 years old, still wonderful. So many secrets in this game. I'm so happy I could come and just talk about the launch of the Super Nintendo and share some of my experiences. So anyways, guys, until next time.